Hey everyone, so uh, welcome back uh, in the lab series. Now, um, hence we have covered uh, the storage concepts in the previous videos. There was the break in the lab series, but we are back to the lab series now. And in this videos, we will going to perform lab with respect to the storage that we have covered. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do in this lab, let me uh, put in the perspective, we are going to uh, create the persistent volume dynamically, or we're gonna provision it dynamically with Azure disks. So, you know, as per my previous video, we need storage classes for dynamic provisioning. So we'll see the default storage classes available for us, though we can customize, we, we know that, right? But we'll see the default provided by Kubernetes or AKS. Then we'll try to describe these storage classes to see the details. Then we'll create the PVC with default storage class and reclaim policy as default means in the end, once we delete the port, which is utilizing the disk, uh, it will also be removed. Then we'll create the Nginx port, which would bound with that claim using claim name. Uh, we'll describe that part to see the description for better understanding. So these are the few tasks we are going to perform in this lab. Okay. So uh, before I begin, uh, let me share my screen quickly and start working on it. All right, so I have this lab, same, nothing changed. Uh, one cluster, kubectl, get node with uh, one node. And whenever we create the AKS, we get this uh, resource we've created by default. And these are the resources used by AKS cluster. Okay. Uh, why I'm showing you this resource group? Because whatever we're going to provision as an Azure resource like Azure Disk, it will start showing here. And once we delete it, it will be removed from here automatically. So this is the uh, one node cluster I have. Let me quickly do kubectl get sc so that we would see the four uh, storage classes by default, Azure File, Azure File Premium, this default is for Azure Disk Standard SSD and the Managed Premium is the Azure Disk Managed Premium, right? Let me try to kubectl describe as C default. Let's check the one we are going to uh, utilize in our lab. Okay, and I would suggest to you if you're performing these labs along with me, you do go ahead and uh, describe all of them for your own understanding. So here we go. It simply says, uh, if you remember in the previous video, I mentioned provisionals, parameters and reclaim policies, which are, uh, which defines the storage class and storage class needs them to define the storage tier, let's put it this way. So this is the managed and standard SSD. Uh, and by default, it's the delete policy. It means the disk which will create uh, will get deleted once we get rid of this uh, uh, volume, which is using this SC to provision the disk, okay? So default storage is uh, backed by standard SSDs that we have seen. So if I'm gonna describe the managed premium, it would be managed, it would be premium. Uh, and standard SSDs delivers cost-effective storage. We all know that uh, while still delivering the reliable performance. But if you if you're looking for high performance, low latency disk, so managed premium storage class is uh, is the right choice. Okay. All right. So uh, let me quickly clear this out and uh, show you cat this uh, YAML file, which says kind as persistent volume claim. 
So we are creating a PVC. And how are we creating? We, by utilizing the storage class managed premium with five gigs. So what, what this YAML file is gonna do once I apply it, it will create a claim with uh, five GB Azure managed premium disk. It's a claim. Uh, so let me quickly create it first and I'll show you. Uh, Azure preamble. Now, since, uh, if you remember, I have already explained it in the previous video, it's a claim. It's not creating the disk yet. It's a claim. Now, as soon as any pod is utilizing it, it will spin up a disk at the back end. That's why it's like dynamic. When it's needed, it would be created. So if I show you kubectl get pvc, it's pending, right? Uh, and even if I come here in the resource group, I refresh it, uh, you'll find in the type there is uh, no disk. Nothing is happening, not even creating. Okay, so let's get back here and simply cat the another file as your pvc disk.yaml so what it is doing it's creating an nginx uh, pod which is uh, utilizing the claim with the name azure manage disk that's what the name of our pvc and it's going to mount it here on this volume mount okay so let me quickly kubectl apply Azure PVC, there we go. Now, this is created now. Now, if I do kubectl get uh, pod, I'm sorry, I did a mistake here, uh, get pod, it will show you pod is creating. Why it's taking that time? Because now it's creating the disk at the back end. kubectl get pvc. Now it's bound. And if I come back to the resource group, you see if I refresh it, it's still in progress. Not sure. Now it's there, right there, you see? It just appeared. So all those claims, resources, disks that we are uh, creating through YAML file for our AKS cluster is uh, would be in this resource group, which is which created by AKS or Azure for us when we deploy AKS. So if I do kubectl get pod, now I would have the running container one by one, and let me quickly go ahead and describe it kubectl describe pod my pod. Now, if I describe it, you can simply say these are the steps that it followed. Uh, it attached the volume, succeeded for volume this uh, image and it started working. Now, if I scroll it up, you see the claim name is Azure Manage uh, Disk, right? So if I do uh, kubectl, if you have not seen or missed it, kubectl get pvc, you would find Azure Managed Disk as your claim. Okay, now let me go ahead and delete this kubectl, uh, delete hyphen f, uh, Azure pod, pvc disk, and also delete the pod uh, claim. We do not even need the claim. Or well, what we can we can do, we can play a little bit. Now the claim is not deleted, but the pod is who, who which was actually utilizing the claim or created the disk for us. So what do you think if I deleted the pod, uh, would it delete the disk as well? This is the pause <laughs> just for you guys. If you're following me, uh, this video, you can uh, give you answer like yes or no. And we have the answer right here. If I refresh, you'll see disk is still there. So it's not gone yet. So let me 
delete this uh, claim. Now this would delete the uh, disk. What is happening? We need to give it the time and it will delete the disk. Uh, okay, so in this lab, uh, we have seen the uh, storage classes, all the four default storage classes, and we created the claim dynamically uh, uh, utilizing the storage class managed premium and use that claim in our uh, pod. And now I'm just waiting uh, for this disk to be removed from the resource group. And it's gone. See, so it's gone now. So I do not have uh, kubectl get PVC and I do not have pod, right? So when, when we deleted these resources, which were utilizing the disk, even this get deleted because the reclaim policy was default. It gets deleted. If you want it to retain, you got to use the policy as a reclaim. Uh, now in next video, what we're going to do, we'll utilize or we'll, we'll back up, let's put it this way, we'll back up this volume, the five gigs volume and uh, how we do the, how we'll do the backup, we'll, we'll get the snapshot of the disk, then we'll get the uh, disk out of the snapshot and utilize the disk URI uh, to uh, hook up with another pod and utilize the data. Sounds interesting. Yeah, for sure. So let's see that in the next video. Well, till then, thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.